Hi, in this slide we're going to start to talk about uh, going after our core customers and sort of tuning them to the next level. Uh, remember in our original uh, setup slide we talked about dealing with hotel minnows first to create slack and then go when we, we would focus on core accounts, then super losers, then targets, you know, that kind of progression. So now we're into the core customer section. Uh, in this particular case we're going to look at a hospital uh, there we're looking at an industrial paper Jansan distributor uh, who is supposed to replenish 46 closets in a big you know growing going hospital complex on a daily basis and the idea is all hospitals because of medical research technology so forth the amount of stuff that you need to do surgery and all kinds of things has just exploded and the amount of concern about germs and so forth has exploded um, and uh, these hospitals have traditional, you know, storage space that goes back 20, 30, 60, 40 years type of thing, and it's not good enough. So you know, the amount of volume that's flowing through needs to be replenished every day. So this particular, in this case, the my client, the, the industrial paper Jansan distributor, would deliver full truckloads to a bulk storage area on the hospital premise, and then they hired a husband-wife team to load up a, 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 a trolley cart uh, and you know go top off the the, the 46 closets uh, during the swing shift so the the couple worked actually in the laundry at the hospital during the from seven to three or something and then from three on they'd, they'd till late in the evening or something they would top off these closets um, so I said all right well here's how do we do an audit so I went out with the CEO and the vice president of sales the vice president of service and the sales guy it was like an army and we just met the the couple at three at the you know back door of the office we didn't ask the buyers up front that we to tell them we were do that we said we were going to come by and see them but we didn't bother to tell them that we were going to go do all the stuff in advance because my philosophy is it's easier to ask for forgiveness and permission so uh, off we went and we only looked at six closets and I'm a curious person I'm always out of the box and so I'm talking to the husband wife team and we get to the first closet and I notice that 50 percent of the cube in the closet is wasted they sort of put stuff on the floor and, and if, if, if a hospital's got a closet space problem then why aren't we California closet taking advantage of every vertical inch so I asked the couple of the 46 closets how much space is waste. They said, gee, on average, 50%. They said some of these closets, you know, were used for other things historically. One of them's got all these built-in wooden racking things that look like a file system. It's just dead space. It needs to be torn out, and you could put simple little um, shelving in and increase the capacity a lot. So with cell phones, we just took pictures of the first six closets. Right away, I noticed some foreign material there that some other distributor was putting in. Well, it turns out that distributor puts that stuff in there twice a, a uh, twice a week, and it can stock out. And uh, so they have a redundant replenishment service to what we're doing. So maybe we could cut a deal for the other distributor and deliver the stuff for them every day and, and improve the fill rates, kind of thing. We right away said, well, why don't why don't we sell them? that stuff oh that's a buying group specification you know whatever your rigmarole type of thing but it's not enough to look at the space ideally you'd want to California closet it but you'd also want to retune it as far as the mix well to know that you've got to grab a couple of nurses going by which I did and said excuse me ma'am but you know are you do you use this closet or do you know who does and you know they're all one degree separators so I talked to people that did use the closets and I said well what's here that it, what do you wish was here that that isn't? And right away they complained about the fact that they didn't have seat covers, for example, toilet seat covers, which they had to go steal from closets elsewhere in the hospital. I asked mom and pop, hey, how many how many of the closets get seat covers? Of the 46, only 14 get seat covers. Why? We don't know. We just do what we do. Okay, great. So. Um, and I asked ideally what other items would be in the closet that from for that particular area and very quickly if you ask two or three people you get a quick convergence you know though everybody they also get some random stuff everybody's got their one favorite thing but nobody else really would care to have that there so when you get and each each closet is in a different area of the hospital that has a little bit different eclectic needs possibly so you could put different items but the assumption was you can't because you don't have space but we're going to increase the space 50 percent 
So just over six closets, we proved that you could do California closet, double the space, that by talking to local people, we could find one or two items that we could put in. Certainly we should put you know seat covers in all the closets or none of the closets, um, etc. So then we get to the meeting with the buyer and knowing buyers are always busy and have no time and no extra resources and really pretend like they're in charge of and know everything whether they know it or not i just said well hi here's who i am we went we did a little quick audit here's some pictures and so forth and here's what we'd like to do we, we want to you know do the california closet thing and improve your capacity 50 percent we also want to do the survey of two or three people around there and come up with recommendations for how we might put in a little bit of a new mix there and what the upside productivity was because the average nurse spends 50% of their time running around trying to find stuff. They're like logistical warehouse people as opposed to doing customer patient care face-to-face -face type of stuff. So quick and dirty, we've done six closets. We would like to do all 46 closets and give you a whole binder of what we find and what we recommend and so forth and we'll do it all and then we'll give you full credit for what, what what's going on and they're thinking well this is great it'll make me look terrific I don't have to do anything so of course the answer is yes well now the business is up um, more than more than 20 percent of what they had before they're more entrenched and the moral of the story is when you go out and you do a first time audit between the silos so who is in charge of the closet and making sure the closet has got full space utilization and the right mix for the local people that feed on it? Well, there's nobody. So we have somebody who's all about, you know, nurse payroll and, and taking care of patients and response time for patients, but nobody's looking at this, 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 this space in between. So when you go out and you do that and you do it, uh, in a focused, more expert way because you do this kind of supply chain audit for lots of different customers and see lots of different angles. They could only see one thing if they ever did it and they don't internally. Um, then you're going to find a lot of first-time gold and you're going to get it. So hopefully you'll be the ones that are out there doing these audits and taking your core customers to the next level and getting a lot more share of account. End of the story. Thank you.